What's up guys, my name is Dan and welcome to my basement. Today we're gonna to be discussing why new Marvel omnibuses suck. Bye. And we're gonna keep it fairly simple. We have volume one of The Amazing Spider-Man printed in 2007, and we have volume five of The Amazing Spider-Man printed in 2021. We're gonna compare the two, externally, internally, the build of the actual books. We're gonna talk about the spines, the binding, the external cover material used, how they look on the shelves, and the costs. And of course, we're really gonna nerd out. We have our measuring device here, and we're actually gonna measure the interior paper thickness, so stick around. <laughs> So right off the bat you can notice some very obvious differences and that is the book thickness between the two. So I whipped out my handy vernier caliper and I measured volume 1 at 3.175 inches and volume 5 at 1.575 inches. Volume 1 has 200 extra pages compared to volume 5 but even though it has 20% more content, volume 5 is 50% less thick. Taking a look at volume 1 now without the dust jacket, we have a beautiful imitation leather exterior. I absolutely love it, provides a lot of grip and protection from scratches and other damage that can occur. Some very large font size on the spine here, Marvel Omnibus in silver at the top with the number 1 at the bottom with author names, the back is just plain. Cracking it open we have some beautiful thick marble bookend pages. Right from the start, you notice some very thick interior paper, some of the thickest I've ever encountered actually. How thick you may ask? Well, we're talking 500 thousandths of an inch thick, and that's pretty damn thick. Here's a look at the very flexible eye in the binding. Moving on to volume 5 now, externally we don't get that nice exterior imitation leather we got with volume 1, instead we get a very sensitive and easily scratchable matte finish exterior that for some reason is heavily scratched as soon as you take the dust jacket off, right from new. On the back we do get a Spider-Man logo, internally for bookend pages we get a similar matte finish, easily scuffable and very thin this time. No marble finish, like with volume 1 unfortunately. As for the internal pages, they are extremely thin. How thin you might ask? Well, they are half as thick as volume 1's, coming in at only 205 thousandths of an inch. Yes, you can actually see through to the next page, most noticeably in the white sections of pages, and not only the white page borders either. Huge difference with the thickness. The book, however, does lay flat, right from the beginning like the first volume does. The binding is less flexible with a smaller eye. Which one is more durable? In the long run, only time will tell. Even with all these negative changes, the prices have not changed. And finally, the last reason I have for why new Marvel Omnibus suck is the small font size on the spine, which I'm sure a lot of you agree with. Please tell me why the hell they did this, the only reason that I can think of was to accommodate the smaller thickness of these new books since they are cheaping out on the overall paper thickness. Therefore a larger font would not fit on these new books. So there you have it guys, some very disappointing noticeable differences with the newer Marvel books that are coming out these days. And so the big question is, in closing, will this keep me from buying Marvel Omnibus in the future? And the short answer is no, but I will not pay full price for them. I'll either wait for a 30 to 50% off sale or source them locally from a local classifieds for roughly the same savings. I'm not a completionist by any means, so I have mostly all the ones I'm interested in at the moment. I am grateful to own this content in collected editions and enjoy some of the decisions Marvel is making in terms of new collected content, but let's face it, the quality is not holding up. So thanks for watching this video, make sure to subscribe if you're into this kind of content, and we'll see you next time guys, take care.